Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel Tech with S1. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a job cluster in Databricks environment. All right, let's get started. So if you see here, uh, in the previous video, I showed you how to create an all-purpose cluster in my Databricks environment or workspace. In this video, let us see how to create the same uh, job cluster in the Databricks uh, workspace. For that, before we need to create a notebook in order to run a job cluster. So how do we do that? Click on new and here let's click on notebook and I'll, I'll just create a test notebook. Okay. So in here, uh, it let, let's keep this notebook as is. Okay. So, and now I'll just type in print. Welcome to tech with Yashwant. All right. So this is I this is what I want to run. Okay. So so let's go ahead and uh, if if possible, let's copy this file. Right. So so to do that, let's go to job and pipeline here, and or you can also go to workspace and you can see the notebook that was created, and you can po copy the URL here. Uh, or you can copy the path as well, right? So let's copy the URL. So this is required in order for me to run the job cluster. So how do you create a job cluster? Like I mentioned in the previous video, job clusters are optimized for automated workloads and these clusters are designed to be ephemeral, uh, spinning up only when a job is triggered and terminating immediately after the job is completed. So job clusters are used primarily for running automated tasks such as scheduled jobs and data pipelines. So they are particularly useful in production environments where task needs to be executed without you know, manual intervention or something like that. So examples include you can extract, transform and load jobs uh, or ETL jobs, or database maintenance and training a machine learning model on a scheduled uh, basis. All these things are possible with uh, job clusters. And how do you manage this cluster? So unlike your all purpose clusters or ad hoc clusters, so job clusters are not created manually by the user. So instead they're automatically provisioned by the Databricks job, uh, job scheduler to be uh, precise when a job is triggered. So this automation simplifies cluster management in production as there is no need for you know manual intervention to start or even uh, stop a cluster itself. Now the next question is how how the termination of the cluster is managed. Whereas in the all-purpose cluster we had auto termination or you could manually terminate the cluster. Whereas in job clusters, uh, so job clusters are designed to be used for a single purpose and terminate automatically once the assigned task is completed. So this ephemeral nature ensures that resources are utilized only when necessary which helps in optimizing cost and enhancing the efficiency of the resource allocation so from a cost efficiency standpoint uh, job clusters are generally more economical than all purpose clusters therefore it's recommended to use job clusters for production environment to optimize the uh, costs now let's go ahead and create a job and uh, let's see how the cluster will be created automatically so let's go into jobs and pipelines here. So here you will see an option uh, to create. So let me click on create and you will see a job, ETL pipeline, ingestion pipeline. So let's go ahead and click on job. And here I will have to provide uh, the some of the details. As you can see, add your first task. So let's go ahead and add. Uh, I need to select a notebook in order for the job to run. So I'll go ahead and select the notebook and I'll just say test task okay and i'll select type as notebook i'll leave that as is source i'll keep that as workspace and a path you can choose the uh, test notebook that we just created i'll select that and i'll confirm and compute uh, if you want a serverless auto auto scaling cluster you can go ahead and use that for job or if you want a cluster to be created uh, you can also add a new cluster so I'll leave that with a serverless because it's already created. So you will only pay for the job execution time. So no worries. I'll, I'll keep that as is. So if you want, uh, you can also create a job here. Click on add uh, job cluster. You can provide a name to this one. 
similar steps which we followed on the all purpose cluster. So if you haven't watched that video, I'll drop the link to that in the description. Go ahead and check that out. I've explained all the possible things that you see here in detail. So you can uh, you know, provide the name to the cluster, select whether it's going to be a multi node cluster or a single node uh, or access type, whether it's going to be a single user or a shared cluster and performance, what's the runtime of Databricks and uh, you want to use the worker type, uh, the, uh, whether you want to use the spot instance, what's the driver type, uh, do you want to enable auto scaling, the tags and if you want to add extra spark configs, you can go ahead and add that environment variables and all of those. So I'll, I'll just go with this example because the video title says how to create a job cluster. If I'm going to use a, a, a serverless job cluster, it doesn't make any sense. So I just wanted to highlight that, that option is also available. So let me go ahead and click on this. And now, so you can also add, you know, parameters if you want, if you, if you have a dependent library for this to work, you can add that as well. Just click on add and you can provide the file to your library, whether it's a PyPy library, go ahead and provide the coordinates for that and Maven, CRAN, all, all these are supported. And uh, once you have that, you can also add parameters, you can also add the tags and the notification as and when, when you want to, uh, you know, notify the users, let's say if a job fails, you want to notify, you can click on add notification and uh, the notification will be triggered if the job fails. So these capabilities are also there and uh, retries, let's say if a job fail, if you want to retry that for, uh, you know, one or two times more and then uh, send a notification, that is also possible and metrics threshold, all these things are possible. And once you are good with this, go ahead and create a task. This doesn't mean that you are, uh, uh, you know, running this job. Now we will have to trigger the run. So how do you do that? Go back to runs here. And if you see here, uh, you have just added the task. Whereas now if you go ahead and run, so a job cluster will be created and it will go ahead and run whatever we have in that notebook. So remember we have added uh, in the notebook, in the notebook, we added uh, test notebook, print, hello, or welcome to tech with Eshwant. So that will be, uh, you know, displayed as an output as a, as a result of running this job, right? So it will take a bit of time. So I'll probably pause for a while. Uh, once the cluster is up and the result is displayed, I'll come back and I'll show you the results. So see you in some time. All right, as you can see here, uh, my test job has run successfully and you can see the results here as well. It shows it uh, succeeded and uh, it took six minutes, 23 seconds. And uh, you can see the output as well. Let me click on this run. And if you see here, this is what we had on the notebook. Welcome to tech with Eshwant. And the result is here. It was just a print statement and I got the results here. You can do complex uh, job, uh, you can do ETL processes, all those things are possible. And uh, it, it just, the execution time of this particular uh, cell was about 25 seconds, right? So uh, you might ask me another question. Uh, so will I be able to just run jobs with the job cluster? And you can also uh, see the job cluster is terminated now. So that's one of the important thing that I wanted to show you, right? So if you see here, the compute test task cluster, which was created and it is terminated now. So you, you don't see that cluster is terminated. So let's check that. So as I told you in the previous uh, thing, uh, in the previous video, if you go to event log, you can see cluster creation requested, uh, compute is running and then compute dot got terminated just after the execution. It took 25 seconds. You can see the time here. After the job execution, it got terminated automatically, right? So I didn't do that. If I terminate it, it says user terminated. So and so user terminated the cluster. That's not there. So uh, another question you might ask is whether I should only use job cluster. It depends, right? You, you can also run this job with a job cluster, the serverless compute and all those things. How do you do that? Go to task again, go to your uh, compute, click on edit here. And you can even change, right? So you can change this concept uh, if you want. You can uh, do that. Uh, you can go with serverless compute. Uh, if you have a test cluster, 
existing all purpose cluster you can see that right so i have a cluster with the name test cluster so i can select that uh, so if i start the job it will automatically start the cluster if it is not running uh, this is how you do it right so that's all i wanted to cover in this particular video in the next video i'll show you how to get or how to read your kafka streams in 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 your uh, databricks workspace right so we are going to write a python pyspark code in order to achieve that and see how that works right so that's all for this video if you're liking the content that i'm creating please consider subscribing and share it with your friends thank you and i will see you in the next one